morning, Church of Praise, and welcome back to another awesome Sunday. And for all of you who are visiting us for the first time, the second time, or even the third time, we welcome you. We bless you. We know that you're going to enjoy this service, and may God's word also penetrate through your heart and, and live within us, O oh Lord. You know, God told Abraham that Sarah's going to give him a child, you know. They've been waiting for so long. And Sarah was 90 years old, Similan Pulo, okay, 90 years old. And she laughed. You know what God did? God went to Abraham and said, Did Sarah laugh? Do you not know that I am God? I can do the miraculous things? Is there anything too hard for your God? You know, a year later, Sarah had her baby. Isaac was born and she nursed him herself. Isn't that a miracle? Lord, indeed our God, our God is the God of miracles. He makes the blind see. He lame, the lame will walk again. He can heal your sickness. Come, join me as we declare the goodness of God. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible to you My eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible Gonna live by what I see. 
Jesus. I believe, Lord. We believe, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is impossible for you. Oh, we worship the mighty God in which all things are.
that we wear, O oh Lord. Thank you for getting us through this difficult period, O oh Lord. Lord, we also want to humble ourselves and we ask for your forgiveness, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh Lord. For the kingdom, power and the glory is yours forever and ever.
Church of Praise Online. We are so glad that you are able to join us for our service today. We would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. And if this is your first time here with us, we hope you'll be blessed. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join us every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. for our online service. Cutting Edge Youth has its online service every Saturday at 4 p.m. You can get the Zoom link from your youth leader or in the Instagram bio at ce.youth. Every Wednesday night and Saturday morning, we'll be having prayer meetings on Zoom. Our brother Joshua reminded us last Wednesday to give thanks always to the Lord and he shared his testimony on how good God was. He encouraged all of us to testify of his goodness. Yesterday morning, we were encouraged by Pastor Clement to learn to cultivate the presence of God in our lives, in our families, every day of our lives. He reminded us of what the psalmist says in Psalms 1611, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Do join us every Wednesday night and Saturday morning and soak ourselves in God's presence together as a church and as a family of God. Our Trailblazers Children Church will be having its video lesson this weekend. The link will be sent by your cell leaders. We would like to take this opportunity to express our deepest condolences, condolences to our brother Joseph Ku and our sister Elisha Ku on the recent passing of their beloved mother, the late sister Tan Chukwa. We pray God's peace and comfort for their family during this time of bereavement. Take note that offerings can be given via the Boost app by scanning the QR code here or via bank transfer. Scan the other QR code to visit the giving page on our website for more details. Let us pray. Father God, we want to thank you for blessing us in this time Lord. We want to thank you for your enablement for your grace, for your favour, for all the things that are happening in our lives. 
we want to learn to give thanks to you for you are a good God. And Lord, as we learn, as we give our offerings to you, be pleased to use them, Lord, for your kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately, when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth so the father so he asked his father how long has this been happening to him and he said from childhood and often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come, about, can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Hey, good morning to all of you. Uh, glad to see all of you uh, uh, online. <laughs> And uh, glad to see all of you watching this uh, worship uh, service together. And as a church, uh, we just want to praise God and thank God for what He's doing, not only uh, in the church, but now He's doing a great work in your home. Praise God for all of that. And I also want to thank God for His goodness and for His mercy, even in our home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So many of you, every day you see your family, right? Every day you see your wife, your family. You are more a family man now. Huh? And uh, spend more time with them and before everything gets back to uh, normal. Today, I want to share something that the Lord told me and the Lord taught me. And also, it's like a continuation from my wife's sermon last week. And I've entitled my message, God will test your faith. God will test your faith. Now, let's look at uh, John, Luke chapter 7. Okay, I, have, I go to my Bible here. Luke 7 and verse 9. 
Remember this verse? Jesus heard this thing, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I thought about this verse that my wife actually read it. He turned around and he said, I have not seen great, such great faith even in Israel. Um, you know, there have been bad times and there have been good times. Some of us uh, during this lockdown are going through a wonderful time, while others are going through difficult times and bad times. And how we wish everything had been good. For me, there were many good times and there were some bad times. And uh, in the natural, we don't want to be tested, but Jesus came and he did miracles in front of his disciples. As he did miracles, they, they believed. But when things are not so well with them, they lose their faith. So Jesus came and he tested their faith. Let me just bring a few things, just three thoughts I want to share with you. Firstly, let's look at how Jesus commented. In the book of John, the Bible tells us, John verse 11, chapter 1 verse 11, that he came for his own, but his own did not receive him. Who, are, who is his own? The Jews. He came for his own people, but majority of his own did not receive him. In fact, they crucified him. And it is very strange that Jesus, on two very specific occasions, he commented on the faith of the people. But these two persons, uh, I must say, uh, were people without, were not Jews. They were outsiders and Jesus commented on their faith. Okay, let us first of all consider the centurion that my wife read to you last week. And let me read to you again, Luke chapter 7, verse 2 to 10. A certain centurion's servant who was dear to him was sick and was ready to die, was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they begged him, earnestly saying that the one for whom he should do was deserving, for he loved our nation and built us a synagogue. Jesus went with them, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying, to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come. And he come, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this thing, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Let's look at this centurion. He was not a Jew, all right? He was, the three things that I mentioned about him, he was humble, he was respectful, and he understood the authority of God. He sent some of his workers who are Jews, some of his staff who are Jews, to Jesus, to ask Jesus to invite him to come and pray for his servant who is sick and who is dying. So it must be a very serious problem. And so his servants came to Jesus and said, hey, our master, who is, although he's a centurion, although he's not a Jew, but he loves the Jews. He even built us a synagogue. So a centurion who have not seen Jesus, who have only heard of him, was humble 
before God. Whereas the Jews, most many of them were proud when they look at Jesus, they say, hey, this Jesus, huh? we know that he's a man who grew up in a carpenter's house. They were not accepting him and for his teaching and for the miracle that he do. But he was a Jew, and he was a non-Jew, a centurion, an outsider. He was also very respectful of Jesus. When Jesus came, he sent his men outside, say, tell Jesus, no need to come to my house because I'm not worthy. I am a sinner. I am not worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, for him to come to my house. I'm a man of authority. I call people come and I and, and send people anywhere I want as a centurion. So he also understood the authority of Jesus. May I ask you something? If you're sick in the body, I just want to encourage you, humble yourself before God. God can heal you. God can do miracles before for you. But be humble. And I must say this, what if nothing happened as you humble yourself before God? Uh, well, what if you are not healed? Will you keep continue being humble or will you come to Him in pride? You know, we had healing service before. I know some people, especially those who are not from our church, brought sick people to see the one who is preaching. They were humble before him, but I find that they were not really humble before God. Uh, they hoped that the, the man who had the gift of healing will bring healing to him. But they forget that it is God who heals. And we humble ourselves before God. Even when he doesn't heal you, come again the next day and plead before God. Not plead before a man, not plead before a person but to plead before God that He can heal you. God can heal you even without you coming. Uh, what I'm saying is, if the preacher leaves, can he heal you? Of course, God can heal your sickness. You are at home. We have seen so many people who have been healed by God, even at this time when they are home. You don't have to be in church all the time, but that doesn't mean you don't come. That's why this centurion, he was respectful of Jesus. He understood what authority is and he humbled himself before God. He was a great man. He was a man of great authority and he humbled himself. Look at another occasion, Matthew chapter 15. Okay, Matthew chapter 15. Let me read to you verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan, look, he's not a Jew, she's not a Jew, came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word, and he, his disciple came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. Ah, yeah, she cut out us, ah. she disturbed us. Send her away. She keep crying, but he answered and said, I am not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus said, my time has not come. My time is not for non-Jews. It's for my people. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to little Dogs, wow! What if Jesus call you a dog? Will you get angry? Will you get upset? Actually, Jesus, Jesus was not looking down on her. Jesus was testing her. On many, many occasions, He tests our faith. And we feel like, yes, sometimes when we are sick, we come before God. We feel like we are nobody. No matter how much we have achieved, while we are on earth. But we come before God, we are nobody. All your degree, all your achievement before God is nothing. Isn't it? Especially when you are sick and when you are about to die. 
And so this woman came before God and this and the Lord Jesus said to her, I can't throw bread that I make for the children for to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumb which fall from their master's table. See, even little dogs, when they eat the crumbs, they can get healed, they can get miracles. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let, this, let it be to you as you desire. And the daughter was healed from that very hour. It was almost immediate that the daughter was healed. Why? Because the mother came and she will humble herself before God. She was not a Jew, but she said, even the dogs would eat the crumbs that fall from the bread, uh, that fall from the table of his people, his children. Therefore, in the same manner, this woman, she was humble, before God, the woman of Canaan was humble. She was respectful and she understood the same thing, the authority of God. Even at the table, she was just conversing with Jesus only. Jesus, Jesus was not making bread, throwing on the floor. She was just conversing with her and Jesus tested her faith. On many occasions, the Lord Jesus Christ tested our faith. When He tests your faith, will you remain humble before God and say, God, only you can heal. Only you can do miracle and you can do this miracle for me. So Jesus commanded on these two persons who had faith in the Lord. Your faith can heal you. Secondly, let me just say, when Jesus was on earth, I'm trying to get you convinced that when Jesus was on earth, he healed the sick. He touched people who are sick. But he was showing his disciples the importance of faith to trust God and to believe God. That it is not just some kind of automatic power, you know, that God sees whoever is humble before him and God will heal. See, he sees whoever not only humble, but respectful of God and to understand the authority of Jesus, of God. So your faith can heal you. Look at Mark chapter 5, verse 34. The, man, the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, she... Press. No, I don't have time to read through the whole passage to you. She heard about Jesus, was passing by her town. And she had issue of blood for 12 years. She has spent a lot of money getting medical help. But she has no, she's not healed. And she's still as sick. And very weakly, you know, Jesus was surrounded by crowd. And she pressed her way. She said, if only I touch the hem of Jesus' garment, if only I touch his garment, I can be healed. And the moment she pressed through the crowd, she touched Jesus, power flow out of Jesus and touch her. Whose faith is it? Let me ask you, is it the faith of God, faith of Jesus? Yes. In many sense, it's their faith, but it is the faith of the one who is sick to receive the healing touch of God. So she pressed her way for Jesus to heal her. And Jesus turned around and said, Who touched me? And the woman confessed. And then Jesus said, Your faith has made you well. Wow! What a wonderful thing that Jesus said. Your faith has made you well. You know, many people come to Jesus for healing. Many people come to church. Many people come to the pastor, come to the preacher for healing. Yes, we can pray for you. 
we can believe God together with you. But it is your faith many times that will make you well. Let me look. Let's look at another occasion. The ten lepers, they were healed, but only one glorified God. He returned and gave thanks for Jesus' healing. It is the fact that he was well and the fact that Jesus healed him. But Jesus said, didn't I pray for ten people? Why only one came back? And Jesus said to him, I don't know, I'm not sure what happened to the rest of the nine. We have not read of it, whether they, they got their leprosy back. I don't know, I'm not sure. But he is very clear to this one who gave thanks to God and said, God, I thank you for healing me. And Jesus said to him, your faith has made you well. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, it is your faith that saves you it is your faith that heals you. It is your faith that makes you well. Brothers and sisters, if you are sick, if you are down with some problem, I challenge you, exercise your faith in God and that God will heal you. God is in the business of testing our faith. When does God test our faith? When does he test our faith? All the time. All the time God is looking at our faith. He tests our faith when times are bad. When things don't go the way we, you, we want it to or you want it to. When things are bad, that when you need faith, that's when you need faith in God. This pandemic, I will say that times are bad. You are locked down. You cannot go anywhere. Maybe for some of you, you may be afraid, you are scared. But I challenge you, God is testing your faith. Maybe it is your financial situation. Maybe your children, maybe your family. You're thinking, God, how can I trust you? You can test him, you can bless him, you can worship him. Let me share with you a testimony. Some of you say, how come you are still a bit, your speech is not very clear. I want to tell you something. I had a tooth implant two weeks ago. Let me check the date I are on the 7th, on the 7th of September, two weeks ago. So two weeks later, I went to see the same dentist uh, huh? in a in, uh, hospital. The dentist, the swelling all went down, but the gum was still swollen. Okay, still it's still swollen a little bit, huh? So that's why you find that me uh, hissing as I talk. When the dentist saw, wow, well, she was discouraged. She said, "Hey, your everything went down, but your gum are swell and your gum is bleeding." See, I'm an INR patient. INR means uh, the uh, constantly, I have to go for the uh, because I'm a heart patient uh, for the vis we call the viscosity of the blood. Okay, to help understand those who don't go to the hospital who don't have this situation. Maybe your INR too high, your blood is too. Uh, I would say what's the word for it? Uh, viscosity is no good. Uh, that's why it's bleeding. It's not the bleeding hasn't stopped. The bleeding is not at the stitch. The bleeding is at the bottom. Wow, she pressed until very hard, uh, until the blood come out. And uh, she keep pressing and then she give me a lot of gauze. She give me uh, the lotion. She said, you must go home and you must press. Uh, because uh, if we become antiseptic, uh, uh, if, we come, uh, uh, your, if your jaw is... Uh, there are, antiseptic inside. What I need to do is I need to take out the implant. Wow. Take out and throw away, you know, and redo the whole thing, the whole process again. I say, Lord, I, I, actually I pray to the Lord. Uh, for two weeks, uh, this thing, whole thing swell, I pray to the Lord. 
I said, Lord, Ayo, I went for an implant and look what happened to me. The Lord keep telling me, ah, don't worry, it's settled. I will handle it. I will settle it. But the day I was really discouraged or I was really down, I was also scared because of what the dentist say. The dentist keep telling me, oh, you're very lucky, very lucky. The word lucky to me means blessed, ah, okay? You're very lucky that there's no antiseptic, there's, uh, there's no anti, uh, there's no, uh, what do you call it? Huh? Uh, it's, there's no septic inside. Uh, and uh, if it's smelly, if there's uh, it's septic, I have to pull out the implant. But at the moment, you're okay. So I was, I came back home, I was discouraged because hearing the doctor, ma, hearing God and hearing the doctor, two different things. But the doctor is very, very, uh, what you call very uh, uh, very excited uh, she also was very discouraging uh. so she said keep pressing uh. I need to see you this Friday I see you again I see whether uh, the bleeding has stopped or not if the bleeding hasn't stopped and there's septic and it's smelly I'm sorry uh. so she said she will see me on Friday but on Monday I came back home I was discouraged and I talked to God I say, God, what's happening? And you know what God said? I'm testing your faith. God said, Are you God? You test my faith. I don't want this kind of test. Huh? Most of us don't want tests, right? But it is necessary. God tests our faith. It is necessary. So I pray. I say, Lord, Lord, I pray that uh, the, the bleeding will stop. And the Lord said, Why are you worry? You worry? What the doctor say or what I say? See, most of us will say, we believe what the doctor say. But God told me that you will be all right, you'll be okay. So, yesterday I went to see the doctor again. Friday, ma. Okay, after four days, I went to see the doctor. The doctor have a look. Ah, the doctor said, very good. Hallelujah. Very good. No more bleeding. Ah, but you got to clean and uh, make sure your, your gum is uh, clean and all that. Every day you clean your gum up. Wow. From what she said on Monday and what she said to, uh, on Friday, it's a totally different thing. She spoke like she, she's God. Uh. <laughs> she speaks the same as God. Uh. And so I, said, I came back, I said, Lord, forgive me uh, for being discouraged. Forgive me for for not really believing you. Uh. I believe what I heard, but the doctor, you know, contradict, you know, I, I was a bit uh, down. Uh. I, told, I told my wife also that I was discouraged. My wife said, be healed in the name of Jesus. Don't worry. Of course, uh, you know, sometimes uh, when it does, didn't happen to you, you say to others, it's good encouragement, but sometimes when it happened to us, uh, we, we think twice. Uh. So, God tests our faith when times are bad. I want you to know something. God also tests our faith when time is good. When times are good, well, what will God do? Yes, He tests our faith also. Sometimes when things are good, we feel complacent, like the children of Israel. Huh? When times are good, they forget God. They intermarry with other tribes, uh, with other uh, people who don't believe in God. And when times are good, we forget God. You know, when times are good for you, it's important for us to keep thinking and thanking and praising God. Don't, don't, uh, when times are good, financially or health-wise, or whatever, when times are good, we need to also live by faith. God is testing our faith. How to pass the test? Let me just tell you, when good times and bad times, how to pass the test? Give thanks always. Always give thanks. Thank you, Lord, for, for bad times. Thank you, Lord, 
that I'm in good times. I tell you, sometimes when times are good, uh, we never keep our faith in God. You must pay your tithes, you must be faithful, you must praise God and thank God. Sometimes, I, I want you to know that it's easier to lose our faith and to be complacent when times are good. Give thanks always, praise and worship Him. Join us for prayer time. Join us for our Zoom meeting. Join us during our prayer meeting. Join us in this service. Praise God and worship Him. Secondly, surrender your life to God. Romans chapter 14 verse 8 says, If we live or we die, both ways, our life we live unto the Lord. Whether in bad times or in good times, we live unto God. Because God tests our faith. Thirdly, we serve Him with gladness. Don't, don't think, huh? No, some Christians, they think, oh, yeah, I'm going through bad time. I think I must serve God. Uh, I think God is reminding me to serve Him. Yes, that's very good. But how about good time? During good times, some Christians do not want to serve God. They say, times are so good. Huh? I'm very busy with my work. I'm busy with my business. And money is coming in. I must do all this first. Then only later I serve God. No, I encourage you to serve Him. Just right now, say, Lord, what can I do to serve Him, to serve the Lord? You know, God tests our faith all the time. What do you do when you pray, when you come before God? Do you worship Him? Do you praise Him? Do you serve Him? Lord, I always want to serve you. And when you do that, your faith, you will pass the test. In conclusion, learn to hear from God. God always tells the truth. Hallelujah. Even though sometimes doctors may not tell you, hey, doctor is telling you the truth, okay? He may tell you that you are dying, he may tell you you are sick, he may tell you this place and that place. He will tell you, Yes, they tell you the truth, doctors. But God tells you greater truth. What will happen at the end if you have faith? Trust in Him and depend on Him because God never, never tells us lies. And sometimes when you hear from God, ah, oh, it's so soothing, isn't it? So I challenge you to put God first in your life in bad times and in good times. Let us all pray. Father, I pray right now for those who are going through bad time. May they obey you. May they hear from you. Hear from your Holy Spirit especially. May they live for you. May they glorify you even in difficult times. I pray for those who are going through good times who have been blessed during this time if money has been coming in, if they have been healthy, I pray that they will not forget you. They will always remember and thank you that you are a great God. Hallelujah. And I pray for those who are listening right now in the name of Jesus. May you get our spiritual life right. May we be a people that hear you. May we be people that will honor you no matter what the situation is. We respect you, we honor you, we humble ourselves before you, and we glorify you with our life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for all of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Uh, well, pray along with us, with the church. I don't know when we will reopen but I think that uh, we will not be far away where we will be able to reopen 
again. God bless you and see you again, church. Come on, get to your feet and let's worship God. He is good. Through you, I can do anything. God, you are good. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible to you. Light eyes are open.